In our everyday lives, we are often distracted by what is visible, work deadlines, family obligations, or personal ambitions. But there exists a war that cannot be perceived by the naked eye, a battle between light and darkness, good and evil, Christ and the Antichrist. This war is relentless, fierce, and entirely supernatural. St. Paul declared this truth with unwavering clarity, urging believers to put on the full armor of God, Ephesians chapter 6, 11. His call to action was not a suggestion. It was a command, a divine imperative for our protection and ultimate victory. This battle is not fought with human strength. Instead, we are called to rely entirely on God's might. The good news is that God has already equipped his children with weapons that are mighty through him. The Bible paints a vivid and sobering picture of the enemy we face. Satan is not an abstract idea or a poetic metaphor for evil. He is a very real and malevolent being, ruthless in his intentions and masterful in his strategies. His purpose is singular and devastating, to destroy all that God has created and holds dear. He is relentless, targeting not just our circumstances but also the very core of who we are, our minds, bodies, relationships, and our faith in God. The enemy is a cunning deceiver, a manipulator who sows division, confusion, and despair wherever he can. His schemes are not haphazard but meticulously crafted, tailored to exploit our vulnerabilities. He whispers lies that play on our fears, preys on our insecurities, and strikes at the moments when we are weakest. The Apostle Paul warns us of this reality, declaring, Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Ephesians chapter 6, 12. But let this truth not lead to despair, for we are not abandoned to face this enemy alone. The same God who created the universe has equipped us to withstand and overcome every attack. The Bible does not merely reveal the presence of this adversary, it also unveils the full extent of God's provision for our defense and victory. Through His Word, God has given us spiritual armor and divine weapons that are powerful and effective. These are not of human design but forged in the strength of the Almighty, ensuring that we can stand firm, resist the enemy, and emerge victorious through Christ. The enemy may prowl like a lion, seeking whom he may devour, but we serve the Lion of Judah. Who has already triumphed? Let us stand boldly, clothed in the armor of God, wielding his word, and fighting the good fight with faith, confidence, and unwavering hope. Paul describes six pieces of armor essential for spiritual warfare, with a seventh element, prayer, completing the set. These tools are not mere symbols but powerful resources for overcoming the enemy. 1. The belt of truth, truth is foundational. Just as a soldier's belt secures their armor, God's truth stabilizes us in a world filled with lies. Jesus proclaimed, I am the way, the truth, and the life, John chapter 14, 6. When we cling to truth, we stand firm against deception. 2. The breastplate of righteousness, righteousness guards our hearts, much like a breastplate protects vital organs. Through Christ, we are declared righteous, enabling us to stand confidently against accusations from the enemy. 3. The shoes of peace, the gospel of peace gives us firm footing, allowing us to walk boldly in faith and spread God's love. Even in hostile environments. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God, Matthew chapter 5, 9, 4. The shield of faith, faith quenches the fiery darts of doubt and fear hurled by the enemy. Our faith in God's promises protects us from spiritual harm and enables us to move forward with courage. 5. The helmet of salvation, salvation safeguards our minds. When doubts arise, the assurance of our salvation reminds us that we are eternally secure in Christ. Take every thought captive to obey Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 5, 6. The sword of the Spirit, the Word of God is our offensive weapon. It cuts through lies, bringing clarity and power to our battles. As Jesus demonstrated during his temptation, quoting scripture defeats the enemy. 7. Prayer, though often overlooked, prayer is vital. It connects us directly to God, empowering every piece of armor. 
Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Ephesians chapter 6, 18. The battle has already been won. Colossians chapter 2, 15 assures us that Jesus, through his sacrifice on the cross, stripped the powers of darkness of their strength, exposing them to shame and declaring his ultimate victory over them. Satan has been defeated once and for all. Yet, like a retreating foe refusing to accept defeat, he continues to fight back, attempting to deceive, distract, and discourage believers from walking in their victory. This ongoing resistance is why we must remain steadfast and vigilant. We cannot afford to grow weary in our faith or let down our guard. Through the power of God, we have been given authority over the enemy. We can stand firm, resist his attacks, and rebuke his schemes with confidence. James chapter 4, 7 offers us this powerful promise, Submit yourselves, then, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. To resist effectively, we must first surrender completely to God. In our submission lies the strength to overcome. When we place ourselves under God's authority, His power flows through us, equipping us to push back the darkness. Satan's retreat is not because of our own might but because he trembles before the name of Jesus and the authority given to those who belong to him. Victory is not something we fight for, it is something we stand in. The cross has already ensured it, and our role is to walk in that triumph daily, keeping our eyes on Christ and rejecting the lies and distractions of the enemy. When life's challenges feel insurmountable, take heart in this unshakable truth, God's power knows no limits. His strength surpasses every obstacle and every enemy. As Ephesians chapter 3, 20 proclaims, He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. No matter the size of the storm you face, His resources are infinite, and His love is unwavering. Time and again, Scripture reveals the awe-inspiring ways God has shown His unmatched power. He divided the Red Sea, creating a path of deliverance for His people and proving He makes a way where there is none. He rained down manna from heaven, sustaining His children in the barren wilderness and showing He is the ultimate provider. He defeated death itself through the resurrection of Jesus, breaking its hold forever and offering eternal life to all who believe. These moments are not just stories of the past, they are testimonies of the God we serve today. He is still parting seas in your life, providing for your needs, and resurrecting hope where it seems lost. He remains the Lion of Judah, roaring with authority over your struggles. The Prince of Peace, calming the chaos in your heart, and the victorious King who fights on your behalf. If He has done it before, He will do it again. Trust in His power, stand firm in His promises, and let His boundless grace carry you through. The same God who worked wonders then is working for you now. Believers are called to action, not complacency. We are warriors in the service of the Almighty, equipped with divine power and charged with a mission far greater than ourselves. The fight of faith is not confined to personal struggles. It is a battle for souls, for truth, and for the advancement of God's kingdom on earth. This call demands courage, dedication, and a willingness to engage in the spiritual war around us. In your family, be a peacemaker and intercessor. Pray fervently for healing where there is brokenness, for unity where there is division, and for God's presence to reign in your home. In your community, live as a light in the darkness. Be a voice of encouragement, a source of compassion, and a living testimony to God's grace and love. In your nation, boldly stand for what is righteous. Pray for leaders, for justice, and for the hearts of people to turn toward God. Be the hands and feet of Christ in a world desperately in need of hope. The Apostle Paul urges us in Ephesians chapter 6, 13 to arm ourselves with spiritual readiness, to stand unwavering against the forces of evil. The call to put on the full armor of God is not a passive suggestion, it is a rallying cry to prepare, to persevere, and to prevail. Let us heed this call with the seriousness it deserves. This is a battle worth fighting, for it is about the eternal destinies of souls, the glory of God's name, and the establishment of His will on earth. Suit up in faith, wield the truth of His word, and step forward in prayer and power. Together, as soldiers of Christ, we will stand firm, pressing on until the day of His ultimate victory.
In the arena of spiritual warfare, our strength does not stem from our abilities, resources, or even our resilience, it is drawn solely from the Lord. The source of all power and victory. C.S. Lewis profoundly described our world as enemy-occupied territory. This vivid metaphor reminds us that, as followers of Christ, we are not passive observers in a neutral land. We are agents of a divine mission in a world under siege, part of a glorious campaign to reclaim what belongs to the rightful King, Jesus Christ. This war is not fought with physical weapons but with spiritual armor and God's unyielding power. It is a battle that tests not only our faith but also our resolve to stand firm when the forces of darkness seem insurmountable. Yet we are not alone. The King himself leads us, having already secured the ultimate victory through his death and resurrection. Romans chapter 8, 37 declares this triumph, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Our victory is not merely possible, it is guaranteed through Christ. The armor of God equips us for every trial and attack. Truth, as our foundation, helps us discern the lies of the enemy. Righteousness guards our hearts, ensuring that we live in a way that reflects Christ's holiness. The peace of the gospel gives us the confidence to stand firm, unshaken by fear. Faith becomes our shield, extinguishing every fiery arrow of doubt or temptation. The assurance of salvation protects our minds from despair, while the word of God serves as our sword, piercing through the darkness with its power. Prayer binds all these elements together, connecting us to the commander of this divine army. As we rise to this challenge, let us remember that we fight not for victory but from victory. The battle may be fierce, and the enemy relentless, but the outcome has already been decided. The cross of Christ is the ultimate declaration that the forces of darkness have been defeated. So, let us march forward, clothed in his strength and emboldened by his spirit. We fight not for our glory, but for his kingdom, knowing that the victory is not ours to earn but to claim. Stand firm, for the Lord has already overcome, and in him, we are more than conquerors. This is not our fight, it is his. And in his hands, the victory is assured.